What up, Doe Ledge here? Chill with me. Wake y'all asses up. Good morning, Battle Rap. Good morning, Battle Rap world. Listen, no glasses, Ledge. Y'all know what time it is. I'm not here to play around with y'all. Got a couple of things to discuss. All MBR shit, Michigan Battle Rap shit. Listen, I don't know about no surf, ARP. They all had events. None of that shit was free. It wasn't streaming anywhere. Uh, RBE don't do like, you know, streaming services. They got a paywall, but it wasn't even on the paywall. It's just straight to it. So if you had to be there, it drops on YouTube, whatever it drops. Salute to all the winners, the losers, the debatables. Cool. Uh, we do have times on the show today. Times just had one of the top five battles so far in battle rap across the board versus fate. It was on King of the Dot. Um, it was an exhibition uh, about that opened up the uh, the finals, the finale of the season, and it was pretty fucking dope, bro. So we're gonna talk about that. Plus his music, man. He's his music is really heavy here in the city. Um, of Detroit and just like throughout Michigan if you know you know so uh, we're gonna talk to him about both you know gotta talk about the music gonna talk about the battles and whatever else you want to talk about because that's the homie but I gotta get to some Michigan battle rap shit man some business at hand the good the bad the ugly gotta gotta get there gotta be honest that's why I ain't got no it's no glasses last day man y'all know what time it is it's some shit I helped put together so I gotta be all the way honest with it man Bar War Certified happened over the weekend. Shout out to Smo. It was also his birthday weekend. Shout out to the Rosés who do phenomenal work. Uh, shout out to Kim's Eats and Treats, man. Uh, I heard really good things about the food that she had. Kim's Eats and Treats. Uh, let me let me give you a shout out. Like the food you had there was, I heard was incredible. I didn't get to get any. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't y'all fault. I was just moving around, being too busy for my own good. Um, but my wife loved it. A couple of other women said it was fire. Some of the ballers had food. They said it was... So she has my full support. I vouch for her. Kim's Eats and Treats is amazing. All right. So salute to her on doing dope work as a vendor. Um, Maddie. Maddie. I don't know if you're going to watch this, Maddie. But your contributions cannot go uh, unnoticed and, uh, yeah, it, and unrecognized. Maddie, we appreciate you. And somebody else, my man P, man, Piranha. He know what it is, Piranha. You know. You held it down. You held it down. I ain't got to say much. We ain't got to talk too much about it. But, uh, yeah, man. So, it's five battles. There were three, excuse me, two three round battles, um, in a timely fashion, like nothing quick. We we I think it's important for us to get back to I wouldn't say a ground time style of sixty seconds, but maybe ninety seconds or even a little bit more than that. But not no more of these three round battles, especially when we're doing some grassroots shit and we're just trying to develop talent and see who's who and what is what. Um, trying to get away from those three uh round battles that have like four minutes 4 30 like it just it just drags out it drags out or uh, artists because let's i'm gonna be honest with you a lot there's a bigger majority of the artists who just aren't that engaging for four and a half minutes of material per round just there's actually a small percentage of that you can get a larger um you can get a much greater effect by more battlers if you condense their time to me. So let's give them a chance to win. I feel like you're setting up a lot of battlers for failure when you're giving them that much time to write and to rap. So that's what this was. It was two battles that had three round battles, but it wasn't like long. And um, and then you had the main event again. Uh, it was Trufo making his Bar Wars debut versus Clax Green who's been like tearing shit up here in NBR and even on the road, you know, he got some releases still to come out of his road work, which has kind of propelled him to get this play along with his eye battles, uh, kind of showing his debut there where he, he pretty much 30, uh, someone pretty clearly too. So it was, and it was bad. So he's been working to get a main event in his own, you know, state against the caliber of a true foe. 
and we'll get to that one. We let's let's start off at the bottom of the card, man. Trip Loco from Youngstown, twenty from Chicago. Um, so I um I will say Trip won the battle clearly. He had the better material. He had the better performance, stage presence, but he jammed up uh, during his round. He's, and this is a one round battle. Like always, it's always unfortunate and a little bit concerning when you can't get through a one round battle. Like I feel if you got three rounds and one of the rounds you jam up, you wrote a lot. You wrote a lot to get to three rounds of material. But in a one round battle, you know, it's not like we actually round for eight minutes. You know what I'm saying? So if you can't get through that. That's sometimes that can be alarming to me. So he didn't get through it, but he had moments before that because I remember June looking at me like, like pointing at him like, Mike, yeah, shout out to June as well, man. ASG Radio. Shout out to June. I should have, oh, damn, I forgot to say his name in the beginning. Yo, June, if you're watching this, I said your name, but I just said it later in the show. Um, yeah, so he had the more of the moments. He had more of the performance. He had the better bars, more creativity. He jammed up. I guess what I can say is he did get through his material. Like, he didn't just jersey and stop. Like, he got a sip of water a few times or whatever. And so he got through his round, and it, well, people were, like, still impressed to a degree. Uh, 20. He had, like, one dope line, and but he couldn't follow it up with nothing major. And he just... He crapped the bed, man. I don't know how else to say it. Uh, yeah, he crapped the bed, and he apologized, and he even spit some of his bars to me that he didn't get out. And what was funny is, like, the bar that his very next few bars was actually dope. So I'm like, maybe if you would got to that, maybe that's where you would have started cooking. I don't know, but we'll never know. We'll never find out. Uh, yeah, so that's how that battle went. It's, uh, like, it's, you know. The whole purpose of this card outside of the main event was to find at least one diamond in the rough. You know what I'm saying? And we'll get to that one. We'll get to that. But uh, so that's how that battle went. Um, classic versus B. Ross. Classic versus B. Ross. B. Ross was making his debut. He's from he's from Muskegon. Uh, so, so he traveled a nice way against Classic. Uh, who I believe I've seen him a couple times on the Outfit League over there shout out to langston and everybody up there and b ross started out unique he had a and that's the thing when you and that's the thing an important thing about local talent right you want to try to pull from as many different states as possible because i feel like each, excuse me different cities as possible because i feel like each city might have their own lingo their own way of uh formulating bars and, and own way of just dressing shit up and like you know he had this very meticulous way of like going into breaking down classic and whatever like that. And his vocabulary was a, a little more broad than your usual, like, you know, four bar setup rapper like that. Right. He just, again, couldn't get to his materials kind of a theme. Sadly, it was a theme for the night. So that's really all I got to say about him. He had people engaged, and he lost them immediately when he couldn't get through all this shit. He jammed up Jersey, D Detroit it, or whatever you want to use. Classic, got through his material. Thank heavens, we got one. Thank God, uh, Classic got through his material. But it's not just getting through your material, right? We're not just going to give you brownie points for spelling your name correctly on a test. You know what I'm saying? Like, you actually still had to say something. And he was saying some shit, you know what I'm saying? He had a couple of lines that was like, ooh. Like, you know, he he had a couple. He definitely did. More more I would say more than a couple. And um it was a clear victory from him. Um, one of the better out of the battles that I seen watching him before he got on this card, I would put this up there with some of the material. Even more, I think he battled with uh, the Vontae kid outside somewhere. I think his material in this battle was much better than that. And then another one I would like. So I think this was his best showing that I've seen out of the two to three battles I've seen. So that means he's showing improvement and he's getting better and he's taking it serious. Um, I also paid attention to the way he showed up. He showed up on time. You know, he wasn't doing too much talking. He wasn't doing, you know, he was really, he really took this. I can tell who takes the moment serious. And so 
shout out to classic um probably be getting a call back um and yeah yeah you know and shout out to b ross for taking the chance and and coming out from where, from where he came but yeah that's that, that was pretty much a clear win for classic uh Teddy MC and Falcata was the first three round battle. The first three rounder. Uh, Teddy is a guy who's been on Bar Wars for a, for a minute. Like he he's been here. I believe I think he battled with like Joey Cough and people like that. So he's been around here. Like he's very familiar with the Bar Wars brand. Um, now Foul is what we would like to call a late bloomer. Um, and there's always jokes about him because he's much older than some of the guys that. Um, he, uh, he's getting in the ring with, at times, you know, we call him Unk, let Unk rap, you know what I'm saying? He got this very mature, um, approach about him and way about him. And I personally, this is one, I personally wanted to see him get a plate. So I saw him at the Tony Young event, uh, shout out to Dollar and everybody, you know, over at Alpha who put that dope event together. And I saw him do work, you know what I'm saying? He uh, went against somebody on the return, I think it was Ill Blaze, and he did work. I was like, yo, he's been pretty consistent as of late. Let's, he he needed to make his Bar Wars debut. Made his debut, and this was a total contrast in styles. Teddy is nothing but jokes, pure entertainment, had people laughing. But here's the thing about that. Uh, he just was not clean outside of the first round. And so you're going against somebody and June always says this Unk doesn't lose. Like you can say what you want. His material isn't the, always the most electrifying. Like as far as throughout a whole round, he's not like, Oh, he's snapping going crazy, but he always does enough to be like, that was a good solid round. And if you're doing that for three rounds, you're going to beat a lot of these guys because a lot of these guys is just not prepared the way they should be prepared, man. Just be honest, man. Like, just know, like, the prepping for these battles has to take a different um, level. Like, it has to up, it has to raise the level, man. I'm not, not all the way okay with what I'm seeing as far as that. And, you know, he, you know, Teddy was cool. He was trying to, like, joke, it, joke his way out of it. But at just some point, you know, it's just, you just wet the bed, man. You wet the bed. Like you had the crowd in the palm of your hands and you lose it immediately when you're looking up at the sky, trying to figure out what your next line is. And while I felt like foul got better almost each round, I wouldn't say from the second or third, from the first round, his, it was cool. Second round to me was his best round. Uh, actually, Teddy was gaining on him in that round because that was beginning to be his best round, but it fumbled the bag. So... That round automatically goes to foul. And then Teddy, all but Jersey in the third. So you lost 2-1, two, two really. I think I think Teddy gets the first. But you definitely lose the last two. So another win for foul. And we'll probably see him again. Like, shout out to Unk. And Unk had dope material, too. Like, like I said, his second round was really good. Really strong. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, yeah. No, shout out to foul, man. I, I like that. Um, barcode Chili and Mike Phelps ended the night, but we'll go ahead and talk about it right now. Mike Phelps, um, he's dope, man. He's always been dope. He, him and Teddy, though, shared a similar trait where they, you know, they could just rely heavily on freestyling and getting through. And, and, and maybe because they're from that old era, I don't know if it's, the, I wouldn't call it the grind time, the king of the die era, but just the old Bar Wars era where being a dope freestyler really was like that shit. Like it could really bail you out of some shit, but there's a thing for, for using it as like a plus or using it as a crutch. You know what I'm saying? Being too overly reliant on, Oh, you know what I'm saying? I can write half and just figure the rest out later. We in an age where structure matters. Structure matters. And he ran into someone with a lot of structure, with a game plan, and, you know, had people rooting for him, too. And that's Barcode Chili, man. Barcode Chili, one of the performers of the night, hands down. Hands down, one of them for sure 
um and this brother is out of grand rapids um and grand rapids has got some talent out there um traditionally it hasn't always been looked at in the same light as a you know detroit pontiac flint those areas but they got they got some they got some people they got some people um it was good to call him to uh reach out to him to have him come and do this and showcase that grand rapids got talent like that uh barcode i believe is a league out there and he put on three rounds clean he had some shit that make you go whoa whoa you see phelps pointing at him a couple of times like that was yeah that was that and he had one of those each round that's important he didn't just load up and you'd be like yeah, first round was great, but that was in the second and third. It was just, eh. each round he had something that make you, yeah, that impressed you. That impressed me. You know what I'm saying? And that C Bree would say, "I'm hard to impress." That's blasphemy. It's absolute, just liabilities. All right, but I will say, he was one of the most impressive people over the weekend for sure and phelps did his thing phelps had this run too phelps had this freestyle run where he did something about something off the wall with it something like he just like he had like this run in the third that was so fire that it kind of shook the room a bit but again when you doing that yeah you can get one of those moments but then the rest of it it can be choppy like how many times can you make the crowd do that just off the top and um so that battle was good though i will say that battle was good probably my favorite battle of the night probably my favorite battle of the night mike phelps versus barcode chili uh like i said teddy and foul was was getting good but teddy just didn't he didn't bring it home he didn't bring it home but uh yeah phelps and chili i think delivered for for the most part but I got that chili. I got chili kind of skating with that one. I ain't gonna hold you. I ain't gonna hold you, man. That's just my opinion. But you know, Phelps, Phelps is Phelps, bro. He'll be back. He'll he'll, he'll take it seriously and uh, maybe do a little more writing for his next opponent and, and having some some more shit layered and catered to the opponent to really get him up out of there. Main event: Trufo versus Clax Green. Um, people, a lot of people popped up to see that. I, I shout to Marv. Marv was in the building as well. Um, yeah, man, people pulled up. And, you know, like I said, Piranha was there, obviously. Because, I, one, because I asked him, you know, I think he was going to show up anyway because True was his homie. True was his homie. But also, you know, I did. Like, yo, it mean a lot if you pulled up. He said, for sure, I'm going to be there. Sure enough, the homie was there. Thank God he was. Uh, man, so... The battle starts, man. True actually didn't want to wait. We was going to cut to a break for a minute to, uh, like, just, you know, people get food, smoke, whatever. And he was just like, nah, let's get this cracking right now. So we got it cracking about, you know, about as fast as possible. True foe starts off. And I think what's going to get lost in all this is how good true foe round was. Now, true wasn't the cleanest, you know, he doubled back a few times, a couple of, ah, you know, and got it back. It wasn't, it wasn't these long jersey, like just memory loss around. So like I say, blah, blah, blah. like he, he, you know, it was just, it wasn't the cleanest. It wasn't the cleanest. It kind of reminded me of him versus Cuban a little bit. That's what that, it kind of reminds me of that where he had dope shit. Cause he just, he's just good. He's going to have dope shit. True foe is never, I've never had a true foe battle um, on my screen where I was like, bro, this ain't it. Like, I've never had that. I've never had, you know, that come across my mind. It's always been, damn, I wish he was cleaner. You know what I'm saying? To a lesser degree with this battle, it wasn't really about being super clean, but uh, it was actually more about clacks. It was less about what true did or didn't do. It was more about what clacks did do. Clax, he's just taking, he's just not like, I don't know. He's just at a point in his career where he's just like, it's either going to happen now or it's never going to happen. That's how I feel like Clax is taking this. Like, it's either going to happen for me now or never. So he's like putting this all into the shit. Now he might come 
at you before the event. Like, man, I need help with my round. You know, joking, like trying to see. Like, damn, I think I might freestyle this. Damn, this shit came. This shit sound like to me. But, though, the moment when they did the introduce, when Smo said, introduce yourself, and he started yelling like that, it's all my zoo faculty. I'm like, oh, shit, why are you talking about he yelling like this, bro? It should have felt, should have felt like he was attacking us. Felt like he was attacking us. But instead, he started attacking Truefoe, bro. And some of the lines in there was hitting. The Lariat line, the Chariot line. Yes, he had, he had some 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 work in there. Um, the battle did get under, interrupted briefly because of you know back and forth amongst true and you know some some heck, hecklers i'll just put it like that that and let me be clear those weren't guys that were rick clax there was not clax green's people they just happened to be positioned on that side you know what i'm saying of the, of the circle but those he didn't bring them or nothing like that so if you see the footage, I'm like, damn, Clax got to control his people. Those were not his people. He don't know them at all. So, you know, that happened. And it kind of threw off the momentum of what Clax was doing. So when you get things back uh, situated, Clax is kind of, I mean, no, I wouldn't even say Clax was out of it. He had fire material after it, but it's just the momentum, the energy that he created in the building had left. So it kind of leaves you with a lack of desire to even keep continue so he kind of cut his round short and just ended it you know kind of flawlessly he didn't choke or anything he just like you know time like i already done but even if because where no matter where he stopped at even if he never came back i'm gonna be honest and this is true probably watching this i'm gonna be honest i think that even if the battle didn't continue if 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 Clack stops right after the whatever happened, he probably still wins the round. I just think he said a couple, he had a couple more of them ones that was just, mm, that really hit to me, like to me. So that's just personally. I thought it was a dope one rounder though. Like I thought they both got their shit off and I can tell the level of respect True had for Clax by the shit that True had. True had dope shit. So, you know, I, you know, I saw that, so. It was dope that that wasn't the end of the night. Like I said, actually, Barco, Chili, and Phelps was, which ended up being Battle of the Night. So you end with Battle of the Night. Uh, the goal was, you know, to to show that Clax is impressive and he is legit and he is one of the people to fear from the state. I think that's a, put a, put a check there. I think he proven that. I think he proven he's a real threat out here. And um, he should also get booked more out of town for sure to get some plates. So he proved that. That's a check. Uh, another thing with this car was just to see, was there any diamond in the rough that we might be missing that can be in a rotation for more Bar, World, Bar Wars events or just events, opportunities for them anywhere? And I think Barco Chili just proved that he he ready. He ready to get some some more plates outside of just, you know, barcode up in Grand Rapids and things like that. So I think we, I, to me, that was a goal, two for two. And you want to have a bonus, like creating dope atmosphere. I want to shout out Motown Maven, a.k.a. Uh, no, that is it. Motown Maven, you know what I'm saying? Niche, shout out to her for pulling up. She ain't never been to a NBR event. She finally pulled up. I was happy to see her there. Um, who else? My man Kyle, who I ain't seen since, man, we were youngins. He pulled up for a minute. I wish he was able to stay for the whole event. You know what I'm saying? So... That was cool to see him pull up. And just to everybody else that pulled up, man, we're, I really, really appreciate that. Uh, again, it was Smo's birthday. We had a cake out there on deck for him, too. You know, his aunt showed love. So it was it was a dope, dope, dope experience. And, uh, yeah, man, that was pretty much it. All right. So now we're going to get to the interview portion. Going off me one-on-one -on -one with my guy, Times, coming up now. Back with another one, man. As promised, you see him. He's on the cover of this week's edition. He is uh, the heart and soul of Detroit right now, man, as far as battle rap, as far as music, just as far as energy. You know what I'm saying? I want to just say energy, period. 
You know what I'm saying? And uh, y'all seen him put on the show out there with Fate on King of the Dot, but he also got a dope, dope album, dope project that he just released as well. Also, happy belated birthday, you know, blessed again, seeing another one. So, you know, I had to bring him on here, man. It's long overdue. It's one and only, man. Times, man. GHG. You know what I'm saying? Top Gunner. All that, you know what I mean? I appreciate you, man. Shit, it's been a long time coming, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's definitely, definitely, definitely uh, long overdue. Uh, I'm showing people the album right now. Greyhound Gang presents Times. GHG, nobody talking like this, too. Uh, the artwork Ooh. is crazy. This I love man, this Shout artwork. out to the Rosés, man. You know, shout out to my peoples, the Rosés, man. They, they did pretty much all my album covers. So, you know, I, I keep that shit in-house all the time. Yeah, see, I didn't I didn't know they did this, dog. I, I thought about it. I was like, Rosé's probably did this. But I was like, no, I don't know. But that's how you know they, they versatile as hell, yeah. man. They crazy. Yeah. And, and um, with this project, man, coming off the last one, what, what would you trying to do? Would you trying to keep it the same, but just like, you know, maybe different instrumentals? Or would you just trying to, what would you trying to prove on this one as opposed to the first joint? Um, shit, when I came up with the little brand, but actually, I want to uh, give a shout out to my brother, Tony Young. Yes, sir. He the one who helped solidify that brand. You feel me? Like, he used to keep saying that shit. Like, times ain't nobody talking like you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta make that shit known. Mm -hmm. And when I did the first one, it was like, you know, a collective of bangers that I was working on. And then a couple of, you know, songs that came about as I was recording. But with this one, I really sat down and put the whole project together at the same time. You know what I'm saying? And the main focus was to, to just show that nobody talking like this, like the most outlandish shit, the craziest bars, just talking crazy on some shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I know like everybody be trying, like I'm noticing our pocket that we got here in the city, everybody is starting to try to emulate that shit. But like you can tell. Yeah. You can tell when somebody really from here, it just comes across different, way more authentic. Um, and then you got to give thanks to like, you know, shouts out to them boys in Flint, Rio and them, because they really was the ones who made it, you know, saying national. But yeah. I've been rapping like that, though. Like, I've been saying the most craziest shit. Niggas in my camp been doing that, you feel me? But when yeah. they came, and then they just put it on a bigger scale, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, shout out to them, too. Yeah, yeah, shout out to them. Uh, You already know, speaking of Tony Young, that's my favorite shit anyway. The Forever Young joint is my, that's the one I opened, Uh, one of the Forever Young uh, event when I did that, when we covered that. Uh, yeah. When you was in the building for that, like I covered it with that song. I actually played it at my event over the weekend for Bar Wars. I remember I got mad. Somebody cut my shit off. I'm like, no, it ain't cutting. Like, we letting that ride. What? Let that, that ride. Yeah, no, real shit. Like, you'll hear about that. Like, I was like, no, we ain't, who told y'all to change that? We ain't doing that. But, uh, so, like, that's my favorite. Uh, then this is one with you. And I think it's the kid, what's his name? JoJo. Is it called Cheap Friends or some shit? Yeah, me and Paige, Jojo. Yeah, that's that that one produced that, by Stizzlematic, man. I was about to ask you that beat Stizzle. wicked to me, man. I don't know why yeah, I fuck with that my beat. Young so boy Stizzle, man, he right here in the booth with me right hey, now. Hey, 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 let him know I'm a fan, man. Yeah, no, that that beat got it was like it caught me off guard, and I'm like, I'm fucking with this. I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. it hit me off guard like that, man. Shit, groovy, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with this, like, you seem like you're keeping everything in house. Is that the plan going forward? Uh, with your next projects, like is that like the goal? Just make sure everybody eat within the camp, or expand uh, beyond um, that. It's crazy, man, because you know, being an artist, I do want to work with other people. Uh huh. But as far as like you know, my engineer, I think he's the best engineer in the world. You feel me? I don't think nobody else can make me sound like him. Mm -hmm. So as far as that, and so as far as my production. That's going to always be in-house, but I am open. You know, I am going to work with different producers and stuff. Um, my main focus with this next tape, you know, I got hella shit. Like, I'm working on an album right now, um, me and uh, Tay Nino, and uh, I got two more other projects coming before I even think about nobody talking like this three. Mm. But 
you know what I'm saying? When I do get there, I'm gonna have some big features like that. I think that's my my name, my next main goal. You feel? Yeah, for sure. And I and, and people might not know, like you also got like the compilation shits with like the league enterprises, which is that's that's a whole different shit. That's my shit too. Uh, what is that shit? Yeah. The night night of bosses, I think is what it's called. Uh, yeah. Anytime that shit come on, like I, I'm I actually starting to know that shit word for word. And that's kind of crazy. <laughs> like. I, yeah, I heard it so much at events. I, 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 I added that to the mix last night that's as well. That's a classic album, though. Like, that's really, like, all this shit is really, you know, Tony's vision, bro. Like, mm. before he passed, him and Dollar came together, and they like, look, this is what we going to do. We yeah. grab the artists that we grab, and we really, like, when bro when bro passed, we, we really was about to can that shit, bro. Like, really. Damn. We was about to can that shit. That album probably would have never even came out. You feel me? But we had to just we had to just push on and put that shit out. You feel me? And just make his dream come true. You feel me? Absolutely. Let me uh ask you this: What's the difference between times when he's like with the league and y'all collaborating, and when you a solo guy on your own shit? Is there a bit of a difference? Uh. Not at all. It's just like, man, being around these dudes made my work ethic crazy, you feel me? Mm. Um, we, we bang out three, four songs in about two or three hours, you know what I'm saying? So Damn. when you working like that, you can't help but to get better. That's probably the only difference. When I was a solo artist at first, you know, I've always been around these guys, but when we all took it serious at the same time, it just made everybody better. You got Bigs putting out albums, Polo dropping albums. Dollar was he was the the, the start though. You feel me? Like yeah. Dollar, the reason I took this shit serious for real. You know what I'm saying? I started seeing that nigga make money, getting booked for shows and shit. And he like, nigga, you the one though. Like yeah. you the one who's supposed to be doing this shit. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, that's that's dope, man. And uh, for those who don't know, like nobody. Talk like this too is available right now as we talk about Everywhere, it. Man. Like and get the first one too, man. The first one, great music. Like yeah. I got some dope projects out, man. I'm on my fifth project in two years. That don't sound like too much, but for a nigga like me, man, that shit great, man. That's no, a blessing. no, it, it it's actually it's a lot compared to like other people that battle rap too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And try to juggle both. That shit ain't no no small feat. You know what I'm saying? So, but that's the thing. I've been doing music my whole life. Like I got hella albums I never put out because I was so focused on thinking of what people thought about me. You feel I me? Mean, like mm. I built that character for myself with this battle rap shit. When I'm I'm trying to harmonize and sing and shit, I ain't yeah. want people to look at me weird. But I swear, once I stopped giving a fuck about that shit, that's when everything took off, man. You, hey, I, t- I think I told you personally, like, I fuck with the rap shit, but, like, when you, the mel- the melodic shit is my favorite version of your shit. I think, uh... I got an al- a album on the way, like, that's all it is, bro, man. This shit is gonna be fucking epic, bro. Uh, my Mama Thug is probably my favorite song of yours, period. So, like, man. when you in that yeah. pocket, I'm like, oh, he sound crazy, like, in a good way, you know what I'm saying? And th- and it was crazy, because that was the darkest period of my life when I was recording that type of music, you know what I'm saying? They always That's say true. sometimes that bring out the best art, though, you know what I'm saying? For whatever mm-hmm. reason. It's true. So, yeah, true. man. Uh, r- Briefly, I want to talk about, man, top three battles of the year so far, and it's going to be hard to knock it out of the top 10, man. You and Fate, y'all went crazy. I did not know that that shit was like in less, what, less than two weeks notice or some shit like that. Oh, uh, yeah. That yeah. shit was... But that's, the, 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 the thing about it was I was supposed to battle somebody else. <coughs> and last, last minute, they switched it. Damn. <coughs> so that's what really kind of made it two weeks notice, you know? <coughs> Damn. So, oh, so I, I didn't know that either. I didn't know you. So you was booked already for that card, but they switched. You, you thought I wasn't gonna make? I mean, they <laughs> owe me at least that. You yeah, no, you did. Yeah, you went three and zero in the in the in the fucking season, and, and still uh, had to uh, like not be a part of the actual playoffs, which was whack and shit. You know what I'm saying? So right. they definitely had they definitely had to look out for you. Got you out there to Vegas, and you cooked up, man. And I was telling, yeah. I was telling the people in NBR like, 
I think some a couple people they th thought you was gonna do good, but maybe they was a little bit worried because you know who was fake. But I'm like, why though? Like they gotta fucking put that respect on my yeah, name, like, bro. Like, fate. like I knew you and fate would get busy. Uh, afterwards, I know they talking. They gotta be talking to you nice now, right? Like about plates and shit. Yeah, you already know, man. But I mean, I, it go with loyalty, bro. Like. The reasons that I'm loyal to King of the Dot is not battle rap. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Of course, that's how we met. That's how we got in each other's graces. Yeah. But it ain't about the battle rap. When them, them niggas stood on 10 toes in different situations. For you sure. know what I'm saying? That that mattered way more than some battle rap shit. Mm. And for that, they going to always be my niggas. With mm. that being said, I, I talked to Organic. You know, I taught him how I felt. You mm -hmm. feel me? He understood. And we're going to keep it pushing. But, you know, they're, they're my dogs. You feel me? They changed my fucking life, man. Yeah. I can't I can't never even front on them. Yeah, no, that's a fact. Shout, shout out to the whole staff over there. Uh, is there anybody that you want in particular that you like, you know, I need to get in the ring with him to really show that I'm, I'm one of them because they plan or, or, or not really? Man, uh... It's a couple dudes I would like to battle, but I, the way this shit set up, it probably won't happen. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to have to go over there to them other guys. Mm. You feel me? And you know what I'm saying? It's crazy got this shit work, man. I feel like if you talent, if you got talent, you know what I'm saying? You should be able to go wherever you want yeah, and get on. I but unfortunately, you know, niggas <laughs> play roles and everybody fucking with the people they want to fuck with, you know what I'm saying? Which yeah. I feel like that shit hurt, hurt the culture, you feel me? Because I can stay at King of the Dot and be a star, you feel me? But I can definitely go to these other lanes and show some of their stars ain't what they think they is, you feel me? So, yeah. No, that's all it is. Yeah, it's unfortunate, man, because it's a lot of matchups I would, I would love to see you in for sure. But you know, it's really on them. You see, like I love the battle easy to block captain though. That was what I, that's what I was thinking about. I, I was, love the battle. The one dude will be talking slick. I was thinking easy. I would love to see you against chess. I think you know you and chess be no. Nah, what's the one guy? Uh, is it Kid Slade? Kid Slade, yeah. Talk different. Don't he yeah, uh, I want yeah. Talk different versus nobody talking like yeah, this. You got Come yeah, on. you got talk different. You got uh the dope, all the dope talk, all that shit. Yeah, he he be he be talking like uh, Big K, real name Brandon. Uh you know, there's a couple of dudes I like to rock with, but man, time to tell you, for me shit. I got a lot of shit on my plate already, so I got Noah coming up next month. That's a fact. That's that shit is gonna be bad. I'm <laughs> done with that. I'm done with that already. So shit. Yeah, just, yeah. That's that's when. What's the date on that? I think uh on the twenty first of May. May twenty first. Oh shit. Yeah. That's gonna be that's gonna be crazy. You and Noah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. People gonna have to tune in for that. Like, and see, I'm gonna show him the difference with this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like. I, he battled Ice, he battled Dice, he battled E Real. That's not pressure. You know what I'm None saying? No like, pressure. To, they, they don't count. It's not pressure, man. Oh, oh man. I, I see. I see. Uh, after once Dice came back and he, you know, people got him beat Noah. I see him throwing little shots at you in the comments. Like, well, why are you talking crazy to you? Cause I've been on his head for years. He ain't want to battle me when he was when he was that guy, you know what mm. I'm saying? But when I take off, like I don't give a fuck what nobody say, bro. Like when it come to Detroit battle rap, ain't nobody fucking with me, bro, or my team. You know what I'm saying? I'm the only dude who was there when they was so called the greats. I'm the only. I was the one that they was saying was trash. The one they said all they talk about is street shit. All he talk about is this. He ain't got no pen. He ain't got nothing. Now look at me and look at them. You mm. know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. You saying the tables turn and they gonna you say if, and as long as you got something to do with it, they gonna stay. It's gonna stay that way, huh? Bro, I I, I run this bitch, bro. I, I've never let the people down, bro. 
I don't fuck up. Like, I yeah. can't say the same for these other niggas, bro. Yeah, and no. I'm just being real. No, no, you definitely put 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 the put the state on on, on your backs, but throughout the tournament with this performance versus fate. Yeah, you don't be dropping the ball, man. We definitely, no. we definitely need that representation for With sure. With that being said, y'all top dogs need to come see me, bro. Because at this point, I'm the last one. Yeah, they got to come Mac, out. Mac, Ill, JC, JC. need to come outside. Yeah, it got to it gotta happen someday. It got to happen someday. And uh, whenever that happens, I will I will be in the building for that. You already know. Tell right? caffeine, cut the check, man. Ledge, you got it. Yeah, <laughs> caffeine. <laughs> hey, caffeine. We can do that on caffeine. Hey, roses. Yeah. We can shoot it with the roses on my my channel. We can get cut that going. Check. Yeah, send me send us, send us a bag, and we will have that shit. I'm ready. I'm ready. ready with you where you is, bro. Yeah, don't play with me. No. Don't play with me in this money, caffeine. No, but, uh, I wanted to make it out to y'all shit, man, but I, I was still a little recovery mode from the party, but yeah, I heard, no, I, I heard I, good things. Yeah, some standout people. It was, it was a couple of standouts, man. How did the party go? And Did you enjoy yourself? Man, epic, man. Yeah. Epic. Yeah. Yeah, so so mad I couldn't make it, man. Wifey was sick as a dog. But uh, no, nah, man, continue success. I know you got you about to hit the studio, and um, dog, we gotta tap in and do more more shows, more like I want to do some exclusive shit with you, like maybe you know follow you around a day in the life of times or some shit, you know. Oh some... man, get your get your bulletproof vest ready. Hey man, I'm ready, dog. I'm ready, man. You, you know, what no, I'm, I'm just talking shit, man. I'm, I'm just ready. sitting back, man. I'm cooling. I'm uh, -huh. uh, getting back in my promoter bag. You know, I had the litest parties last summer, so. I might keep that shit going. Mm -hmm. um, interested in booking me, man. You know who to holler at. Holler at that boy, Dollar Sign and Symbol. Get him that sure. DM. Man. You know what I'm saying? And we're just going to keep it up, man. Keep these buses going, man. My God, man. Appreciate you. Hey, and glad you can grace the cover of this week's uh, episode, man. You my dog for show. And, uh, you know, I appreciate you. And I'm always pulling for you, my, my guy. Hey, man. I'm proud of you, Edge. Keep it up, man. Yes, sir. This is Good Morning Battle Rap, man. The one and only Times, man. Real shit. No, it is, man. Go get that album right now. Forever Young, Rex Real, Free D-Lo, R.I.P. Keystone, the one and only. Nigga, you know what it is. We out. Yeah, and that's it. That's it. I want to thank Times for his time. I, I had to, it, it was like, it was a layup. It was there. I want to thank Times for his time. You know, he's in the stool, but still had a moment to chop it up with me on the show. I want to thank y'all for tuning in uh, again. I want to thank everybody for pulling up to the Bar Wars event over the weekend. And um, and for those who weren't able to attend but still donated on, you know, going towards the event. You know, it, it, you all, y'all don't, you, Mamas, D. Cherise, uh, Jay, Jay, um, I think Diva as well. Y'all don't understand the, what, how much that helped. For things to go smoothly at that event, y'all y'all don't know. I'm gonna have to tell y'all soon. Like, appreciate the donations, the love y'all show, and um, that's it, man. We go wrap things up there. I'll see you guys next week. We'll probably get we'll get back to more of the national shit next week, and um, yeah. So tune in as always. Give it a battle rap. Peace and love.